go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, if you'll join me for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let the record show that all board members are present. Um, on adoption of the agenda, we do have one change under information reports, item C, the special recognition of 6th and 7th grade staff members has been moved to February. Otherwise, I will uh, I will accept a motion. Your approval. Second. All right. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Mr. Grummerman? Yes. Mr. Kinnear? Yes. Dr. McNeil? Yes. And the chair votes yes as well. Consent agenda. All of the following items. Those items of a routine nature normally approved at board meetings will be approved by one vote unless any board member desires to have a separate vote on any or all of these items. The consent agenda consists of the discussion, consideration, and action on the following items. Items A through T. Second. Mr. Kinnear? Yes. Dr. McNeil? Yes. Mr. Omerman? Yes. Mr. Reyes? Yes. And the chair votes yes as well. All right. Uh, USPA report, I'm going to guess probably no one's here tonight. UCTA, I don't see anyone either. All right, hearings and correspondence. Uh, I don't think we have anyone signed up to speak. All right, instruction, first reading of the 2024-2025 school calendar, Dr. Hertzler. Thank you, President McAdams. Board members, um, <coughs> as it stated, uh, this is uh, I'm presenting to you this evening a first uh, reading of a proposed school calendar for the 24, it's almost hard to say, 2024-25 school year. Um, as you've received this already, I know we've talked about this um, numerous times in our subcommittee meetings that we are looking forward to um, re-implementing our Late Start Fridays, um, or Late Start Fridays for the purpose of teacher collaboration uh, starting next year. Uh, just to remind you that this is something that several years ago we were one of the early adopters of this concept uh, in our school calendar and um, it went very well. Uh, it's something that our teachers, uh, I think, benefited a great deal from. And when we had to deal with the pandemic, uh, certainly we had to make a lot of different modifications and uh, that was one of those things that at the time it wasn't as urgent. Um, and so we made the recommendation, if you recall back in 2020, that we would uh, pull this from our calendar with the understanding that someday we would be bringing it back to you. So um, I am pleased that, uh, that teaching and learning has decided that uh, it is now time uh, to, to reinstate these uh, dates and these times. Uh, there's a little change, whereas before, if you recall, uh, we would modify the calendar each week and then have about a, uh, what was it, a 20 minute modification to the calendar for the sake of having around, uh, help me out, 30, 40 minute collaboration? Okay, so what we're doing now instead of it happening every Friday is that uh, we will still make some accommodations to the, the calendar, the school times, but it will allow our teachers to have now a full hour, which they believe in working with our teachers union as well, that uh, they're going to be able to get so much more from having that uh, one hour uh, every other week as opposed to just about, what, a 20 or 30 minute collaboration time each Friday. So um, I know there, there might be some questions or concerns from parents uh, regarding child care. Uh, we get that. That happened the first time we presented this concept uh, many, many years ago. Uh, but again, uh, we are to the point where we believe that uh, it is something that would be advantageous to uh, our teachers uh, at the same time, not only helping them in terms of with their pedagogy and instruction and the curriculum, but also ultimately uh, it benefits the students and hopefully enhance uh, student learning. So we'll put this out as a first reading um, and allow parents the opportunity to weigh in on this over the next month. Uh, the calendar overall really doesn't change that much. We still have 
two virtual days in this calendar. We still have the conference days uh, starting roughly around the same time period. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we are going to have or, or put in five snow days as well. Uh, I think five seems to be that magic number that we can uh, uh, work through uh, each, each school year. So uh, with that said, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. But again, this is a first reading, so um, it will be interesting to see um, what our parents think of this schedule uh, once, once it's approved. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hodger. Uh, will our students start the same time every Friday, or is that going to be staggered? So, Ms. Calvin, you want to address that? Is it, is it clear, or how will it be made clear, I guess, that, yeah, how, how will it be made clear? I guess that's my question. Yeah. How will it be made well, clear? Yeah, what? so one of the things we did uh, when we implemented this, uh, again, being an early adopter of this, I want to say it was probably been more than 10 years or longer. Time kind of escapes me now, but uh, Ms. Kiger was shaking her head. Yes, it's at least 10 years. Uh, we made it a point to... Uh, the first year, and I think even a few years after that, send out a connected message to parents reminding them that uh, it would be a late start Friday. And we, did, we do that, uh, again, to try to get them in the routine. Mm -hmm. This one will be a little different, and I think it, it might probably behoove us to go ahead and probably send out a message every time we, we have this each week, since it's every other week until at least our parents uh, get, get familiar with this. I think all of that's uh, very helpful and, and will be well received. Um, trying to think about uh, comments, giving folks an opportunity to, to fully digest this for the next time that we come together and think about how we might communicate that, that yes, we put this out for first read. Here are the things that are in here for your consideration. I think, think it would be helpful too. Yeah, we can do that through our communications department. I think that's a good recommendation as a commuter, um, especially from the standpoint that this is going to be new to a lot of our families because it's been, uh, I want to say, what, three years since we've had this uh, in the school operations. Considering take action on future purchases <coughs> using the current job order contract previously approved with RICO construction in the amount of $250,000 from various funds. Dr. Robinson. Yeah, excuse me, I'm not, not Fred. I've worked closely with the JOC, so I thought it might be more appropriate for me to be up here to present. Uh, so uh, President Adams, Dr. Hartzler, members of the board, we're simply asking for um, kind of a, an increase in the amount we may potentially use. Uh, as you may have recalled, we opened bids for our job order contract about this time last year. We have since gone, that was about for $100,000, kind of dip our toes in the water. We've gone back one other time for an increase in the amount. And it's been so popular and so efficient uh, way to deliver work to get done that um, we would like to increase the amount again for another $250,000. These are future purposes, future purchases. We may use that amount, we may not use that amount, um, but we found that it's a very efficient way to get job, uh, smaller jobs done uh, quickly without having to go out for bid for every single little job. It can be very difficult to get three bidders in for small things like Oh, the, the bus loop tile that we did over Christmas break, um, it would be difficult to get three different companies in there and quickly uh, get that job turned around. Um, so again, it's a way to get small jobs done in a quick manner. It's already been competitive, competitively in sealed uh, bid and publicly advertised. We're simply extending the amount that we are using to, to use, the, use this contract. Yeah, I, th I think it's a very efficient 
routines of doing that. Uh, we're comfortable that this meets all the standards, uh, protocols, et cetera. On it. And how many of these do we have? Do you know, is this since we since we went out since we asked you last for an increase, we've done. Um, the bus loop lobby tile, there are patches of carpet in there near our alumni center um, that we replaced with ceramic tile. We did some work on an ER2 restroom to make it more, um, uh, to make it easier to do lifts for changing students in the ER2 program. Uh, we did roof access ladders for our warehouse in our operations center. We added some compressed air drops to the transportation center. We also, um, have a contract for replacing some Mondo flooring in the UMAC and also uh, making some improvements to the ROTC restroom at the Freshman Academy. So again, we're inching towards getting to that limit that we asked for last time and again, we're just asking for an increase. Is, is this the only vendor that we have on that arrangement? Do we have other? Yeah, RICO was the, was the winning bid when we opened okay. it. And again, when we make that bid for the JOC contract, you're basically saying that you're going to use the means guide, which is a, a large publication of what construction costs should be for the Tulsa area, uh, and they bid a modifier, what their uh, markup will be from that means guide, and RICO is the low markup. And how long is that contract good with RICO? As long as they are willing to continue with the, the same means guide. So right now, uh, we're getting to the point where um, they're, they're willing to renew it and continue continue again using the same means guide. Yeah, and so I'm highly confident it meets all the standards. How did we do that on the front end? Did we say up to an amount or? Um, on the front end, when we presented it, the our, our it was an up to amount initially for 100. Again, we did as many jobs to get us about to 100 and then came to you Again, now we're now that we're reaching that 250 right. mark. I'm just saying these are different jobs, so right? They're not. Yes. And so yes, all of these jobs are technically pre-bid, so they've already been bid by the modifier, and so now we're simply again we're, we've reached the amount that you have previously approved. All, all different jobs. Yes, these are all different yeah. jobs. Correct. There's no single job that's 250. These are 30,000, <coughs> 1,200. 17,000. That's, that's the key I was missing. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's very low. I think it was 30, actually. Yeah. So there's, there's no prohibition for us approving amounts if any particular one job hit a certain threshold. That would have to go through a different process, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. That, that's what I, yes. Perfect. Thank you. That that's that's the key that I was trying to recall. Yeah. Let's move for approval. Second. Yes. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Mr. Kane? Yes. And the chair votes yes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, under finance, consider and take action on the proposed revisions to board policy number 3175 Investments, Dr. Williams. Uh, thank you, Madam President, members of the board, and Dr. Hartzler. We're recommending uh, revisions to policy 3175, which is the investments that the district holds. Uh, this policy was reviewed uh, in October with the business subcommittee. However, unfortunately, we did not get it on the uh, policy revision group agenda. So uh, it, is, it is a, a straggler. and. Uh, I apologize for the inconvenience, but we are bringing this tonight. The, rec the revisions that we're recommending on this policy have to do uh, with a number of things. 
One, clarity surrounding our current job titles. So when the, uh, we cleaned up some of the excess language to clarify who does what between the CFO, uh, the Director of Treasury, and, and so forth, uh, that was one uh, item, and you'll see that through the redlining. Uh, the second is uh, to update language concerning our records of our transactions, that those be electronic. Uh, because they are nowadays. And, and finally, probably the most important, uh, has to do with our uh, custodial safekeeping agreements. Uh, we are required under the existing policy when we uh, purchase investments and of course secure collateral for those investments that we hold a uh, what's called a custodial safekeeping agreement with an individual third-party bank, which is now Bank of New York. Well, over the years, excuse me, since our investments are managed through Bank of Oklahoma and we are in a position now where we are earning, of course, more interest and we need the flexibility to be able to move those investments quickly, uh, Bank of Oklahoma approached us and asked us to consider uh, allowing that that uh, custodial safekeeping agreement be held with them. Uh, that is co the common business practice among other schools uh, in the area and uh, eliminate some of the delay in those uh, conducting those transactions also would provide us with a clearer, uh, I guess, view of those uh, uh, investments and our collateral uh, uh, supports those would be available to us through our uh, BOK online banking system. So they, they brought that uh, request to us and it is in fact a more common business practice in schools that has changed over time. Uh, so we're asking that that also uh, be adjusted in the policy. I'd be glad to answer any questions. I think it makes a lot of sense. Cuts out uh, uh, one other entity that you have to exactly. keep track of. Move for approval. Second. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Mr. Tanner? Yes. Dr. McNeil? Yes. Thank you. Uh, consider and take action on the 2023-2024 Child Nutrition Budget Revisions. Uh, thank you. Uh, tonight we're recommending a revision on the 23-24 Child Nutrition Budget. Uh, essentially we're asking to increase the uh, level of expenditures allowed within that fund uh, and that is to accommodate the renovation of the 8th grade uh, kitchen. Um, you may remember that over the years, uh, through the really excellent management of our child nutrition program, we have accrued a rather substantial fund balance, uh, in, in fact, an excess fund balance, um, and we have worked uh, with Mr. Bushyhead and his team uh, to identify ways that we could kind of spin that balance down to a more typical range for our child nutrition fund but also provide funding for some improvements in our kitchens and, and cafeterias. We always set that expenditure level high uh, on our child nutrition fund to allow for unexpected price increases uh, that we may experience with food or supplies. Uh, we also, uh, as you all know, bring commodities to the board every year and the way we handle those in a technical accounting sense requires us to encumber them twice, as it, as it were. Um, so historically, we keep the uh, expenditures uh, in the Child Nutrition Fund um, right around the uh, 11 to $12 million mark. Uh, so we felt like we needed additional appropriations in that fund to allow us to accommodate these construction projects. Second. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Mr. Yes. And the chair votes yes as well. Thank you. Yes. Any business? No business. Anyone signed up to speak? Can I make something with 
Thank you. I know I wish we had a bigger audience here, but uh, as you all know, the January is a National School Board Association Appreciation Month. And so uh, just want to publicly say to you all, thank you for your service and your servant-minded uh, heart of leadership. Uh, we certainly could not do the work that we do without each other and one of you. So thank you uh, for that. I know this is one of these thankless jobs. I, I understand that and as being a member of other boards, but uh, uh, truly it, it, is, it is a very important job. And uh, I just uh, want you to know we really appreciate that everything that you do for, for all of our 15,000 plus students. So thank you. for everybody's patience tonight and your grace <laughs> the roads are great now <laughs> in case you're wondering all right um then next item on our agenda is executive session uh, motion and vote pursuant to oklahoma statute title 25 section 307 b1 to go into executive session to discuss the superintendent's contract Move for approval. Second. Dr. McNeil? Yes. Mr. Kinnear? Yes. Ms. Rowling? Yes. Mr. Reyes? Yes. And the chair votes yes as well. We're in executive session.